my name's Vader, and I was always searching for the best in cannabis. Well, it turns out, if you want something done right, you're going to have to do it yourself. Welcome back to Vader Vision as we continue our test series for our Maui Waui Quiet Electric and Haiwan. Went ahead and started up some more PCR for genetic sex testing at the beginning of the week. Pulled the males on out, set them on the floor so they're not getting any water. A little limpy. We'll go ahead and take them to an outside area. Since it's winter time, they will flower if they are outside and we can double check to make sure they are males, but I'm sure everything's good. So for right now, we are going to start transplanting all the females and I need to move the mothers over into this other little nook and out of the way. I'm gonna take away this little four bulb T5 light that we only had two bulbs in, just keeping things alive over in the corner. Now I'm going to set up a eight bulb T5 lamp for the mothers. So I went ahead and mounted that up over here. There are a few bulbs out, so we'll replace those. I'll go ahead and dig up some excess lamps from the last warehouse grow and we'll pillage some bulbs from them. I'm going to fill up a 40 gallon reservoir with reverse osmosis water, 350 milliliters of our can of cocoa A and B. We're gonna do 200 milliliters of canazyme and 125 milliliters of rhizotonic for our moms and dads. I'm also going to be using a slightly smaller three x three tray because all of my four x four trays are stacked in a storage area and there's a bunch of gear on top of them right now with the build out and I didn't wanna to have to dig through everything. So this one three x three tray was available right in the front and they are small enough that everything fits in here perfectly. So it'll work great for a couple of weeks until we move everything around and get all of the seedlings off into flowering, but they still need a couple more weeks of growth. So we're gonna go ahead and get them transplanted into some larger shoes. As we've done in the past, we're gonna transplant them into these eight inch cocoa basket liners. Should have no problem running them all the way through flowering. Although if some of the larger ones do need a transplant before we go into flowering, I can move them into some larger four or five gallon pots. No problem. I'm also going to keep track of all of our seedlings with these color coded plant tags and mark each of them appropriately with their numbers. This way we can keep track of them through the entire round. I did go ahead and do the PCR the early part of the week for the taller girls. We ran out of solution, so I needed to order a little bit more to finish them all off. So we tested the taller, larger ones, and we're gonna go ahead and give them a transplant right now and spread them out into the other tray. Now, normally I do line these all up and do multiples at a time, so I'll do batches of six or 10, but for display purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and transplant this first one by itself. I'm gonna start by layering the bottom with a few scoops of cocoa, set the plant into the cocoa and then pack some cocoa around the edge, pull the waxy cup off and get her transplanted. Roots are looking good, nice and white, looking healthy and look like right about the time for a transplant. Gonna strip them down pretty heavily. This way we can slow them down and hopefully the shorter ones will catch back up over the next week. Get each of these slid on into their tray Get the water going so that way they get some water refreshing the dry cocoa that we've just put them in. Looking nice and happy. And our short ones over here, we're just gonna leave for a few days during the actual holiday. Then I can go ahead and sex test those once the weekend comes. But since we gave them a solid stripping and pulled a lot of the big fan leaves, just gonna hit them with a little extra IPM. Make sure we knock back any possible bugs that could still be floating around the grow room. Checking back in on the garden after a few days once the holiday is passed on by. Moms and dads looking nice and happy. Looks like they're just about ready for their first topping. That way we can keep them nice and squat and I can trim them up a little bit, especially some of the bottoms. All of our Maui Waui Kwai Electric and High One that we did transplant looking nice and healthy. Already spreading out just a little bit. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm really gonna try and train them and get them looking pretty even as far as the canopy goes. That way when we set them into flower, we can get a nice even canopy for all of our flowers. Checking out all of our seedlings that still need to be sex tested. Looking really healthy and looking good. They've stretched up quite a bit. Looks like they're nice and even with the rest of the garden. So once I transplant all the females, I'll give them a little bit of a trimming and we'll top them 
but I'm not going to trim them up as aggressively. Hopefully we can keep the entire garden looking pretty even from this point out. Although of course, there will be some larger, stretchier ones and some shorter, squatter ones as the phenos start to present themselves more and more as we get towards flower. Next, we're gonna take care of running the sex test for the last seedlings that we have, since we needed to restock some of the solution for the PCR test. Now, as I have mentioned before, we will go over all the details in a separate video series about how to run the PCR and do this DIY at home, just like we are. But there was one good question I did wanna to touch on, which was, for the samples that come back that are undetermined or in the middle and you have to rerun them again, could that be a sign that it is a hermaphrodite? And the answer to that question is no. With this particular test, we are targeting the Y chromosome. So that is the male Y chromosome. If you have a hermaphrodite female and you use female pollen on another female, it will still read in this test with only X chromosome. So it won't set off the male chromosome, even though it is a hermaphrodite. We will go over into more detail and even theory behind this because it can be a complicated subject for sure when it comes to chromosomes and genetics. But in this particular case, nope, this test is only reading the Y chromosome and that's what it is targeting and looking for. So these males right here that we pulled out, they are true males. And these females, they're either going to be regular females or possibly hermaphrodites. Although in this case, we know that we were doing true breeding, so they should all be true females with no issues. That was just something I wanted to touch on real quick since it was a great question and easy answer in this case for the at-home DIY PCR. Okay, well, we got everything transferred over, flooded up the trays. I'm gonna put the extra extension in for this other tray now that we don't have these smaller cups. And then I am running one more round of PCR for a few extra high one that we don't have in this tray. I have to figure out which ones are males and females and then I'll add those as well. But it does look like we have enough females for each strain to stack a full tray for testing for this round. So that was great news. Stoked about those results. Jumping over to our flower room. Although I had good intentions to start the rest of the build out for the flower testing room that we have here that we did show a little bit. So that has just been bumped back to getting the rest of this finished up this week. I did manage to clear the room out. I had stored a bunch of bins in here just to get them out of the way for some other build out areas. And I also managed to get the lights and ballast prepped so that we are ready to go. As soon as I run the final lines for electrical, we will be off to the races and we can flip over our veg girls over here into the flower room. Well, thanks for joining me this week. We did have a Sunday upload this week instead of a Saturday. Not only did the holiday get in the way, but poor Valkyrie broke her ankle on Thanksgiving. That set us back a couple of extra days getting some things done. But luckily she's okay. We did go get everything checked out next raid. So she should be back up and walking in a couple of weeks. So thanks to everybody who's been sending extra positive vibes and a special shout out to everybody who slams that like button, leaves a comment, even if it's just aloha. Your support goes a long way to helping the channel grow. I'll be back again soon enough. So until next time, I'm Vader and I'll see you later.